Well, Don Williams will now discuss some data relevant to the plasma pores boundary, um, the, S, the SQ proton observations through and beyond the plasma pores. I'd like to present some data from the Explorer 45 satellite that seems to be directly relevant to the hot ring current plasma interaction with the cold plasmaspheric plasma. These data are from S cubed or Explorer 45. It was launched on the 15th of November 1971 into an orbit having a 5.24 Earth radius apogee, a 220 kilometer perigee, an inclination of about 3 degrees south, and an orbital period of 7.8 hours. The fact that we're only 3 degrees from the geographic equator means that we're always less than 15 degrees from the geomagnetic equator. Complete pitch angle distributions were obtained by sectoring the satellite spin into 32 pieces. So we have 32 samples in 360 degrees. The pitch angle distributions, therefore, are a reasonable approximation to the equatorial pitch angle distribution. <coughs> the energy range from 1 kilovolt to 800 kilovolts for protons was covered in 28 steps. From 1 kilovolt to 560 kilovolts was covered in 20 steps for electrons, and today we're going to concentrate only on the protons. Now, I'd like to acknowledge the use of data from all the experiment principals, myself included. These are Bob Hoffman, Ted Fritz, Larry Cahill, Nelson Maynard, and Don Gurnett, without whose participation we couldn't have conducted these studies. Larry Lyons has been a co-investigator with me on this particular project, and in our laboratory, Tom Gray and Lauren Matheson have been responsible for the displays that we'll be showing. The orbit is shown on the board. On its outbound pass, the satellite crosses the dusk terminator at about an altitude of 3.5 Earth radii, as it does on its inbound midnight pass. Apogee is at 2100 hours local time. In the first slide, is the pointer here? There it is. We show the magnetic activity of the period of interest. This is December 1971. There are two sudden commencements occurring on the 16th and on the 17th. Five high latitude magnetograms are shown just to show what substorm activity looked like at this time. Explorer 45 orbit coverage is shown in this particular bar graph. We'll show data from orbit 97, which is a pre-storm quiet. We'll concentrate on orbit 103, which is a recovery phase orbit, and for completeness, we'll indicate some main phase data from orbit 101. I don't at all understand the injection process. I think we understand the recovery phase, so we're going to emphasize recovery phase effects. That is, after the ring current became symmetric. <coughs> I'd like to show one slide from a historical point of view which basically shows a time intensity profile through the region of interest with DST shown at the bottom. The curves run, the top curve is 5.3 to 7 kilovolts, 22 to 30 kilovolts, 35 to 50 kilovolts, 670 to 870 kilovolts. You can see the increase in the low energy is associated with the DST and at this L value, L of 4, there is also an increase associated with the undeveloped storm on the previous day. In agreement with early results of Soros and Davis, the high energy particles go away during the main phase and then follow a slow recovery coming back. Based on the data we have, that disappearance of particles could either be due to an adiabatic decompression or it could be due to the actual escape of particles out of the magnetosphere due to the fact that at L values of 4 during these main phases for a time period, the magnetosphere is in a pseudo-trapping region. I'd like now to turn and show the presentation that we've used for our analysis, and please bear with me because I'll probably have to talk through this one. In this plot, each individual plot shows the absolute differential flux covering six orders of magnitude plotted versus a measured pitch angle. All pitch angles that we will show are measured using the simultaneous data from a three-axis vector magnetometer on board the spacecraft. At each column, we show eight energies, 2, 4, 9, 26, through 383 kilovolts, stacked at a given L shell, and then we will show L shells every two-tenth of an Earth radius. Now, even this is a lot of data to put on one slide. For analysis, we use 20 energies stacked, and we show the data every tenth of an Earth radius. And all the patterns that I'll discuss 
are very clear in all sets of these data, including these subsets. This is Orbit 97. It's a pre-storm quiet. It's shown purely for reference purposes, plus a couple of additional facts. <clears throat> First of all, telemetry noise can be seen. You can see missing data here. In addition, you can see the effect of reflected sunlight off the boom coming back into the channel tron detector on this roll of the spacecraft, which covers 90 to 180 degrees in pitch angle. And the region below 3.2 Earth radius affects two or three channels of the solid state detector due to an amplifier saturation problem. None of these data have been edited out, and you'll see these instrument faults appearing in all the data. None of the faults impact the particular analysis that's going to be given today. Now, I'd like, now the main thing that we're going to look at basically when we go into recovery phase is not so much the absolute differential fluxes at this time, but rather the patterns of this data that you see here through the pitch angle distribution. So we'll now proceed to a, a recovery phase orbit, <coughs> which has a couple of interesting characteristics. First of all, if you pick any energy, start at low altitudes and scan to the right, you'll find that the pitch angle distributions evolve from rounded distributions peaked at 90 degree pitch angle to very flat top or very concave top, well, slightly concave top, distributions at high altitudes. Not only does that occur, but the altitude at which the transformation takes place is an increasing function of energy. As the energy increases, the altitude at which this transformation occurs also increases. <coughs> the breaks often can be seen to occur throughout various energy bands, and if we use our detailed analysis, this transformation from flat to rounded, flat to rounded, flat to a rounded distribution, occurs within one-tenth of an Earth radius. It's a very sudden and a very sharp transition. Another fact, which you might or might not be able to see on this plot, but through every recovery phase orbit, where our pitch angle scans are adequate. Every time we measure at very small pitch angles, we see a decrease in intensity. And we'll blow this up in a minute. Now, there are several reasons why our pitch angle scans often aren't adequate. We often see 40 degree distortions in the local geomagnetic field. That means we don't measure pitch angles less than approximately 50, 60 degrees. So we can't get near the loss cone. In addition, there is a, it's very difficult to predict when we get near the loss cone. Now, what we're doing is we're interpreting this decrease at these very small angles that we measure as indicative of an empty loss cone in the altitude range where we see these flat top distributions. Now, if we expand that type of a plot, this is now orbit 102. It's a different recovery phase orbit. This is at an L value of uh, 5.4 Earth radii. We've started the rounding distribution at the higher energies. The lower energies are still flat, and you'll see that the samples that are taken right at the very smallest pitch angles we measure show drops that range anywhere from factors of 2 to 5. Now, the fact that our angular aperture plus the angular scan during our pitch angle scan is significantly larger than the loss cone, the fact that we see a drop is clearly indicative of a very empty loss cone in this flat top type of a distribution. We are left then with looking at data of this type. And I, wa I want to repeat, I guess, one thing. Every recovery phase orbit, from orbit 102 through orbit 111, when we got back to pre-storm values and the plasma pause was never exited by the satellite, <coughs> Every recovery phase orbit shows this basic pattern in its overall transformation from the flat to rounded distribution as well as the empty loss cone when the pitch angle scan is sufficient to see it. So we do have two experimental observational facts during recovery phase in this storm. That is that we do see a transformation from a flat top to a rounded pitch angle distribution that has an altitude dependence such that the transformation takes place at higher altitudes for higher energies. The second one is in the region of the flat top distribution. There seems to be an empty loss cone. All the data we've seen are from the inbound orbit of S-cubed. During recovery phase, the outbound dusk orbits show the same pattern. One thing that I didn't mention in the previous slide, and that is that if you go to a given altitude and look at the energy dependence of the evolution of the pitch angle distribution, 
you find that as you go to higher energies, the width of the flat top becomes narrower. The conclusion we come to, based simply on these experimental facts, is that outside the region of the rounded pitch angle distribution, the symmetric ring current recovery phase is about a perfectly stably trapped particle population as you want to find in the magnetosphere. There is zero or negligible loss due to pitch angle scattering, that as this particle population is traced to lower altitudes, you enter a region of weak to moderate pitch angle diffusion, which is exemplified by the rounded distributions. The reason why we categorize it as weak to moderate is, first of all, the loss cone is not full as you come down to lower altitudes. And secondly, if you stay within a given region of space and have a flat distribution on one orbit, when you come back around on the other orbit, that will have transformed into a rounded distribution, so that gives us a time scale of less than 7.8 hours to go from flat top to rounded. So it's a weak to moderate pitch angle diffusion process that seems to be excited. Let me show simply for completeness, orbit 101, which is a main phase orbit in this case. There are many features of it I don't understand. I don't understand how the particles get injected yet. We are busy collecting as much main phase data as we can and trying to present it to see what happens. However, the same basic underlying pattern, even in a main phase orbit, is seen. The transformation from flat <coughs> to round and with that transformation taking place at higher altitudes, at higher energies. Now, in this main phase orbit, you can see examples where we don't measure below 30 degree pitch angles simply due to local field distortion. There are places in here where we do measure down to these small pitch angles, and you'll see once again, before that transformation makes its break to a rounded one, the loss cone still seems to be empty, indicating that we've already got a particle population that either was injected isotropically or perhaps was put into an isotropic mode after injection, but it has started already to lose the lost cone particles, and we're losing the turbulence that keeps the strong or even moderate diffusion going. <clears throat> now, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes. I'll come back to these conclusions with, with an interpretation in a little bit. But in order to try to compact these types of plots, we're trying a variety of different plots, and I'd like to try a few out on you this morning just to get some reactions. What we've done is we've converted all of this data into true phase space density, and we're contouring it in the V-perp, V-parallel plane. And in the next slide, we show some of our first examples of this. No smoothing has been applied to the data. This has all been computer generated. <coughs> what we have is basically the Liouville parameter, J over P squared, and we've just contoured constant values of it right through our data set. The top of this scale is v perp, and it's running 125 times 10 to the 7th centimeters per second, and each tick mark is 25 times 10 to the 7th centimeters per second. The v parallel scale goes out to 100 times 10 to the 7th centimeters per second. There is no data available through v parallel equals zero simply because of the orientation between the magnetic field and the spin axis. We don't go there. The contours are independently generated in the v perp positive, v perp negative plane. This is pre-storm at five Earth radii. This is the evolution of the distribution to main phase at five Earth radii. These are the first two recovery phase orbits. One thing that did not come out because we put it in red is each one of these curves, we have drawn a circle tangent to this particular curve right at the highest V per region at reach. And those circles are very useful to show how these contours break away from an isotropic distribution function. You can't see it very easily unless the circles are there, but this distribution function, the first recovery phase orbit, is already starting to break away from the near isotropic injection distribution function of main phase. You can see more relaxing occurring here. The way that the relaxation occurs is the high V parallel particles are starting to go away the fastest. Empty loss cones do show up on these plots, but not as clearly in a pitch angle distribution. You can see very sharp breaks where we tick the loss cone, and those are real breaks. Those correspond exactly to the empty loss cone region. <coughs> Here? This? This thing. That's data. That's a data problem. We haven't done, there has been no data editing done in these. There has been no data smoothing. You're looking at instrumentation problems, you're looking at telemetry problems that are mixed up in here. However, the data is good enough to still be able to get a host of conclusions out of these types of plots. We don't understand all the nuances of these yet. 
And we're just showing them here for the first time to see what kind of <coughs> reaction we'll get. Here we show, this is main phase orbit, this is a recovery phase orbit, and we show a spatial evolution from 5 Earth radii to 4 Earth radii to 3.2 Earth radii, and you can see the high V parallel particles just break away and the whole distribution function collapses. The interesting part right now, anyway, is the fact that this distribution function, which is taken at 3.2 Earth radii in a recovery phase orbit, looks very much like the distribution function taken at 5 Earth radii during the pre-storm quiet. Both distribution functions are inside the plasma sphere. Now that's all I'd like to show about these. We're, gonna, we're planning to look at just about all of our data in this format and hopefully utilize it to put it into the diffusion equations and do the calculations far simpler than we can in any other format. I'd like to go back now to our two obs uh, observational facts. We have a flat top empty loss, a flat top pitch angle distribution which converts to a rounded distribution with an altitude dependence showing the conversion taking place at higher altitudes for higher energies and that in the flat top region the loss cone seems to be empty. Now let us try to plot the altitude at which that flat top distribution does indeed break to a rounded distribution. What we have done is gone into the data and picked the angular segment immediately adjacent to the loss cone. We're using the fact that the loss cone is empty and we see a significant decrease in it. When that angular segment immediately adjacent to the loss cone shows a sudden decrease toward the loss cone value, we identify that as the altitude at which the transformation begins. And, it, and this in the data turns out to be identifiable to plus or minus a tenth of an Earth radius. In addition, the fact that we're using a very small pitch angle, the energy of the channel is a very good measure of E parallel at that point in space. Now, you're all familiar with the resonant energy equation, but I'm going to write it down anyway. The parallel resonant energy simply goes the local value of B squared over 8 pi times the total plasma density times a function of the anisotropy of the particles that are participating. And as a matter of fact, it's that anisotropy that ends up defining the range and frequency space uh, of the waves that these particles will interact. We have now measured this as a function of altitude through the technique I just said. We've gone back into the satellite data at each altitude. We've pulled out the value of B, so we've measured B and E. What we're going to plot now is B over 8 pi E parallel, which is nothing more than the total density normalized by the anisotropy factor. And I'm going to leave it normalized by the anisotropy factor because you can see that calculating the anisotropy is a, involves a numerical integration through this distribution function, it is not as simple as putting in a sine to the nth into the particular equation over V perp for the anisotropy. Now, in an estimate, yeah, two minutes, in a, an estimate of F of A, it comes out to be of order one. Now, what we have done on the next slide, then, is this is B squared over 8 pi E parallel, and that equals N over F of A. We've plotted, then, the normalized density and this is in inverse cubic centimeters as a function of altitude. That's the data point set you see here. This is the altitude at which and the best guess estimate of the density at which the DC electric field probe saturation occurs in this orbit. As we go to succeeding recovery phase orbit, this whole picture, including the DC electric field probe saturation, moves out to higher altitudes in conjunction with presumably the plasma pause filling. <clears throat> so, we still have two facts. We go from flat top to rounded, and in the flat top region we have an empty loss cone. Our conclusions are that above the rounded pitch angle distribution, the ring current recovery phase is stably trapped with negligible pitch angle diffusion losses. At lower altitudes, we transform into a region of weak to moderate pitch angle scattering. The spatial, the energy, the temporal dependence of the above during recovery phase, the parallel energy resonant equation analysis, and the comparison with an in-situ measurement of the density strongly indicate that the pitch angle scattering is due to the initiation of ion cyclotron waves as the hot ring current plasma interacts with the plasma sphere. Note that it is not a strong diffusion process. And finally, that this process is a major loss mechanism for ring current particles during recovery phase. The 90 degree particles do behave differently and may need 
charge exchange or convective losses to explain their full losses. We've tried to summarize this in a schematic model of the recovery phase, where as you go out in Earth radii, in the inner regions you have a fairly stable plasma sphere, you have a plasma pause region because each particle picks the appropriate value of B squared over N at which to start diffusing. And the S cubed observations indicate that there's a region just above the plasma pause region where the ring current plasma is stable. It transforms into a moderate diffusive mode unstable to ion cyclotron generation in this region of the plasma pause. High altitudes transforming at the uh, high energies transforming at the high altitude edge, low energies at the low. A resonant energy equation based on the S cube data is shown here. And by inference with low altitude measurements, above the Explorer 45 apogee, which is 5.2 Earth radii, there may very well be a strong diffusion region called the plasma sheet, which has an unknown wave mode producing the instability, where you would observe an isotropic pitch angle distribution. The low altitude observations can be placed consistently into this picture by simply allowing for field line expansion during the storm. Thank you. Don, are you able to estimate the, um, uh, the relative contributions to the decay of the symmetric ring current due to charge exchange versus wave-particle interactions? Uh, I will be able to, but I, I haven't done the numbers now. But it turns out that charge exchange may not be the only uh, factor that you have to invoke for the near 90 degree particles. In one set of orbits, right at the beginning of recovery phase, we find that it, we probably have to invoke a convective loss as well. Charge exchange doesn't operate fast enough. Because if I understood some um, reports of other experimenters recently, they were pointing out that they felt that charge exchange was totally adequate and there was no need at all for wave particle interactions. I don't know if I was. I don't know if anyone else has ever measured the pitch angle distribution. This is the first time it's been measured, and we're finding out that the small pitch angles do indeed seem to go down in a way very consistent with ion cyclotron stimulation. And the 90 degree stuff, which is inefficiently removed by ion cyclotron waves, may need this combination of convection and charge exchange. What, you know, uh, Thorne was talking about in the initial phases where you have instability at outer regions due to the electrostatic loss right. cone. You don't see that? No, no, uh, I didn't say that. We have one pass in a main phase where it looks like Explorer 45 went through all three regions. We saw data consistent with a full loss cone at lower altitudes that was flat with an empty and at lower altitudes yet rounded. I don't know what would cause the strong diffusion. There, there are several postulates, but we don't have enough data to do any detailed analysis on that yet. If I can make a comment myself, I think you need both the electrostatic loss cone. <laughs> you need both the electrostatic loss cone and the high beta ion cyclotron instability or something else to produce complete isotropy. Otherwise, you, you don't, the particles can't be made resonant over the whole pitch angle distribution. There's, there's one interesting experimental corollary to that statement, and that is that to the best of my knowledge, the fact that the plasma sheet may be isotropic is by inference only. I think it's only the fact that you see isotropic loss cones at low altitudes. I don't know if anyone's done a full pitch angle distribution sh through the plasma sheet. And there have been some ideas kicked around that the, is the isotropic loss cones at low altitude may be a low altitude phenomenon, and you get these sombrero-type pitch angle distributions. Um, Maybe this is directed to the same point, but I noticed on one of your slides there was a transition from round to flat uh, during the main phase, or the uh, steepening phase of the storm, way down at L equals 2.6 or something. Yes. And, uh, that agrees with the plasma pause location. At that time? It certainly does. That's very early in the storm for the plasma pause to be so low. That's right. That's it, unusual. Uh, it certainly appears that Injection does not take place over all of main phase. That seems to be quite clear from the data we're getting, that the main phase is not all injection at all. You've already started to stabilize significant portions of the ring current, even during main phase. 
So you're suggesting that the plasma pores had, before the main phase had been fully developed in that particular storm, the plasma pores had gone right down. Yes, yeah, this is a, a point to mention here. The relative <laughs> position and the spatial dimensions of these regions will depend on previous and existing levels of electric and magnetic field activity. If after a very prolonged period of quiet, the plasma pause completely fills up, you may have little, if anything, left of this stable region. Conversely, in an enhanced convective mode where the plasma sheet runs into the plasma pause region itself, again, you may have little, if anything, left of this. But one experimental fact does seem to be clear. If you go up with a vacuum cleaner and you take out the cold plasma and you stuff in a hot plasma, it's stable. It will not seem apparently generate any self-destruct modes at all. I guess it's worth commenting that the data that Richard Thorne showed earlier on the low altitude 100 kV ESRO data with isotropy out further, a region of no precipitation, and then increased precipitation in further, which Thorne observed during the recovery phase, is exactly what we're saying here on this schematic slide that's up in front now. So the low altitude data that Thorne showed is exactly consistent with what's being observed here with the S cube satellite. I think you have to be very careful on that because this is only this low altitude uh, measurement was only being made on one pass. But many of the passes reported by Hultvis and Bernstein have uh, consistency with this picture if they sort into main and recovery phase. It's very important to pick your phases of your activity and sort your data that way. <laughs> 